Welcome to the 32nd episode of the Decompression Chamber. I'm your host, Mario. I'm sure you already know that. Uh, yeah, our opening quote is going to be from Sue Fitzmorris, and the quote goes, You must go on adventures to find out where you truly belong. Roll the intro. No doubt that I never be without my damn brain. Close mouth, I'm clever and I know my damn shame. No clouds hit better, no one know my damn name. No bow, that's your word, I guess we're about to cascade. Yeah, so I hope there's not any road noise or chair squeaking noise, even though um, I'm not going to go out of my way to fix it. So if there is annoying noise, I'm sorry to the two of you who are watching. Um, thank you for joining me, by the way. Um, yeah, so here I am. I'm bloody... I'm doing quite well, I have to say. Um, last, The end of last week was very stressful for me. Two deadlines for big projects at the same time. I was just late nights, not eating very well, not doing enough exercise, just feeling like a robot for schoolwork and... And since then, I've I've relaxed. I, I smashed out one division over the weekend. Kind of got time to lie in bed and recharge, as I like to do, decompress. Here I am. Um, and yeah, and now I've been trying to set good habits, you know. Because for me, a big thing is that sometimes when I'm when I'm leading towards something that I'm anxious about, like I put so much mental energy and stress into thinking about ways that it could go out or ways that I can mitigate possible, you know, negative outcomes and stuff like that, that it becomes all I focus on. So then I get the high of, you know, getting through it and um, completing it or meeting my goal or whatever. But then because, you know, I haven't concentrated on the other aspects of my life that I need to keep consistent and balanced, I immediately tank down again. So it's like this, it's like this short little stump roller coaster where it's like stress, elation, stress, or kind of more like anxiety and depression but in a in a more kind of concentrated form where it's like it's not like a consistent thing but it's just like oh shit i i saw this one thing out but the rest of my life isn't exactly well put together so sometimes you got to be doing that you know so at the moment i, I literally I, i've been telling my flatmates all the time just because i'm trying to ingrain it in myself i'm trying to make better habits you know i'm I'm doing my daily exercise with with kind of a good attitude about it um i'm addressing my work a bit more head-on so i don't procrastinate um i'm trying to have a better attitude just in general just wake up with a better feeling about myself and um you know i'm, I'm eating clean or i'm trying to eat more uh, thing is is it's a blessing and a curse to have an, a metabolism like mine I, I don't think I've ever eaten such that I put on a sub substantial amount of weight you know it just feels like my weight has naturally progressed as I've grown in height and that's pretty much it I mean I've been between 70 and 75 kilos for the best part of four years um that's just kind of the way it is um but yeah so right now I'm I'm in a quite a relaxed balanced state I mean so this this new project that we're heading into on my film course is um is a big collaborative piece and um I've I've been given the role of first assistant camera which um I wanted a camera role so I can't be too uh I I'm quite happy with it um but yeah it, it's not really like a big pre -pro there's no pre production involved I'm just you know I'm the guy who shows up on the day helps set up the camera helps keep the shot my job particularly is called the focus puller because I, it's my job to keep the shot in focus make sure that everything's sharp even when a character is moving through the shot I need to make sure that they're in focus the whole time you know so it's a bit of a difficult job but um I feel like I can take it on and do it and it's also like Sorry about the chair squeak. I'm I'm excited to be working in like a a camera crew. You know, um, I just had a workshop today where they're explaining to us about the camera we're going to use. But tomorrow I've got a, an actual three hour workshop where we'll be getting hands on with the kit. You know, setting up, getting familiar, and it is exciting to know about like the kit and the equipment we're going to use because it's proper like industry quality, like mad stuff. But also, they just sometimes they'll just offhandedly tell us like, "Oh yeah, this lens is five grand, you know, and we got it second hand for a really great price. If you smash it, we probably won't be able to get another one like this." And then they just carry on their day like, "Yeah, anyway, that's just you just set it up, smash it in there, set the camera up, and then you're good to go." But it's also like, "Hey, there's a thousands of pounds worth of glass piece there in that lens, and you have to treat it with utmost care." And um, obviously, that's something that will get reiterated in our workshop tomorrow. But it's like. I wonder how how well ingrained the habits of safely setting up camera equipment I'll be going through before I can fully be comfortable. Like, yeah, I'm sure that this film camera isn't just going to slide off the tripod plate onto the floor into the mud, you know? So, yeah. I In essence, if I was carrying a camera bag from my uni and uh, a car was about to hit me, I would willingly be the human shield for that camera because... I, 
I definitely am worth less in monetary value than those than those cameras. You can talk ethically and philo- philosophically about what my life's really worth, but you know, I'd <laughs> I'd hate to go through the process of telling them that I'd fucked up one of their cameras. You know, that I don't mean that in a suicidal sense. Um, I'm doing okay, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I'm trying to just kind of wake up with a better attitude about my day. I'm trying to, you know, give better habits put more structure into my life, you know, um, I want to be doing more creative writing at the moment, but it's not something that I've really put pen to paper on, literally, in this case, but, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to f- be able to film, like, a short two-minute, three-minute thing to put up on here, you know, sup- draw some bloody, some ice to this thing, um, yeah, even though that'd be quite different to, to my usual content, I'd, I'd like to start building up a repertoire of, of independently filmed projects, um, so hopefully I can I can get together with some people and you know I'm I'm right here surrounded by creatives so we can get some camera equipment out in our reading week and you know bash some stuff out. But yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much how I've been doing at the moment. I I'm just more than anything I'm I'm feeling good right now and I'm just trying to make the most of it. I'm just trying to appreciate that I'm happy while I'm here and and take note of the things that are consistent when I'm happy, you know, there's certain things that are always present when I'm happy, and one of those things, ironically, is being well rested, having enough sleep, and another of those things, you know, is um, consistently doing physical exercise, or, um, you know, another one that I do is, um, I do, like, mental affirmations, like, I've listed them before on these videos, but chances are you've forgotten or don't care, in any case, I just, I read these things that, like, they kind of remind me the thing, the kind of things I want to tell myself, you know, um, not just like the cheesy, like, yes, you're the greatest, you're the champ kind of things, but more like, you know, things about how I feel and how I see the world and, and how I am, so, yeah, I mean, I, thing is, is, I feel like the, the topic of the whole, you know, uh, women's rights movement at the moment is, is big, and um, it's definitely something that needs, you know, attention and I kind of, it's been given attention seemingly, and lots of people joining in the discussion, it, I feel like, you know, I can only speak about this from the position of being a guy, from the perspective of being a guy. Um, At the moment, it's felt like, for me, the best thing I can do, rather than just kind of, like, instinctively make a point or, you know, form a conclusion or have an opinion, I've just been trying to, like, soak in the information, kind of see what everybody's saying, see what, you know, actual women and their experiences are are telling me it's like kind of factor in you know what what a lot of the consensus is and and try and think about what that means for me you know um because it's true about most political movements that it's not enough to just be okay yourself it's like if you're not actively campaigning and actively motioning for the for the progressive for the progression of rights for all these marginalized communities it's like the system itself is built to just slowly crush you with the pressure of your daily life you know and um yeah and so i think a big problem is is that you know everybody's dealing with you know whatever work problems whatever family problems just daily life that joining and creating a widespread grassroots political movement is is it's been built to be difficult there's a reason why like all the like you know the suff- the suffrage movement the civil rights movement any like big political movement to change like the way that we structure things in terms of certain classes or political or certain just groups in general it's like they've always been viewed in hindsight it's like oh wow amazing but at the time they were bloody demonized you know they were told that they were stepping out of line completely breaking all the rules and and when you see now that um new bills are being enacted to supposedly you know enforce um more police for for kind of protection of women kind of thing you know crack down on crime whereas there's little subsections in the bill that will talk about um you know slowly encroaching on our right to protest and um and yeah there was a big protest recently for um for the whole women's thing and it's like yeah we need those protests we need people to be shown their defiance we need people to show that everything isn't okay right now you know like I challenge you to find anybody in your life, any woman in your life, who hasn't had a single experience, like, where they've been uncomfortable uncomfortable because of the way a man's approached them or followed them on the street or spoken to them in a business um, occasion, like, in a belittling or demeaning way, you know, or, you know, 
try to drug them up. Literally, everybody has a st- everybody has more than one story. It's depressing and it's just accepted. You know, it's it's not like what you a guy was a creep to. You. It's kind of just like yeah, there was a creep there, and it's it's not okay. It's just it's not. And you know, you you've got to hope that if you speak out around these things, you know, you hope that you're surrounded by people who have the same views as you on, on someone like, as as key and important as this. It's like yeah, okay, we agree. Not just that you shouldn't treat women like shit, but you should actively go out your way to make sure that everybody's treated the same and when they're not you need to fight against the forces that are making it that way you know and um and the thing that i hate the most as well is that it's always made to from to a guy like it's always made to relate to you you know like oh what if this was your sister what if this was your mom what if this was your daughter like why aren't like women given enough autonomy enough value in themselves to just be like this is a human being who's being not treated right you know shouldn't that be enough you know, do do you have to appeal to my emotional connections to people in my life to actually make me reason about things that should be should be a certain way anyway? It's like, since when isn't someone just themselves before they are something else? You know, like there might be someone in your life who is related to you in a certain way. They are themselves before they are their relationship to you. You know, particularly if you're a man. They, I I really dislike this narrative that it's like. You have to consider a woman in terms of her position to you in your life. It's like, how about she's just her? She's just herself. And that has so much value and enough individual need for protection that it's like, there needs to be more done because of that. Not necessarily because it could be your sister or it could be your mom. Because those things are true. But it's not the most true, if you kind of get what I mean. But yeah, I'm sorry for that kind of... It's not really a rant. It's just my view on it. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure my perspective and my opinion will develop the more information I get and the more I hear people's voices, you know, so yeah, thank you very much for joining me for this video, I've quite enjoyed it actually, so I'm going to try and get going a bit more regularly again, so yeah, thank you very much, um, lots of love, lots of care, and hope your work's in progress, keep progressing. See, never think about the consequences if you hate